Hello everyone, and welcome to today's video where we are going to discuss the Ottawa Senators organization and how they've gotten themselves into this hole they're in right now, and how they can get out of it. The Ottawa Senators were a story just a year ago when they made it all the way to double overtime of Game 7 before being eliminated by the Pittsburgh Penguins, and now, they're the biggest laughing stock in the league. Without further ado, let's discuss the Ottawa Senators and how to improve the future of the organization. Just over a year ago, the Ottawa Senators were in the Eastern Conference Finals, which was an amazing story in itself. They made it to Game 7 and were in double overtime when Chris Kunitz buried the dagger and scored the series winning goal. This was just the start of the demolition that would follow. The Senators started the 2017-18 season slow as they were near the bottom of the standings. When the Senators made the trade for Matt Duchesne though, this is when the organization started falling apart. In the three-way deal, the Senators gave up what we now know as their 2019 first-round pick, Kyle Turris, Andrew Hammond, a third-round pick in the 2019 draft, and Shane Bowers, who was a prospect draft to 20th overall in 2017. This move looked like it was going to put Ottawa back on top of the NHL, but that's almost the exact opposite of what happened. Maybe the Sens overachieved in the 2016-17 season, and maybe they weren't actually as good of a team as they looked. Ottawa did face Colorado in back-to-back -back games in Sweden right after the trade happened, and it looked like Ottawa was going to rise up. This trade is now looking to be like a huge win for Colorado, as they got Andrew Hammond who played good for them during the playoffs, Samuel Gerrard from Nashville who looks like he can make a splash for the Avs, and many more assets including Ottawa's first round pick in 2019, which could be the number one pick as speculated by analysts right now. Later on in the season, on the night of the NHL 100 Classic, where the Senators shut out the Canadians in a 3-0 victory, Eugene Melnick stated that he could be forced to move the franchise to another city if attendance didn't pick up, which was a dumb thing to say on the night of Ottawa's outdoor game, which was one of the biggest nights of the year for Senators fans. Because the Sens were having a bad year and they were out of playoff contention, they decided to sell out the trade deadline. The first trade they made was Dion Phaneuf and Nate Thompson to the LA Kings for Marion Gabrick and Nick Short, which seemed like more of a contract dump than anything. Ottawa didn't really gain any youth besides Nick Short, who was a decent player and played 6 games with the Senators, until he was traded to Calgary at the trade deadline for 2019 7th round pick. Why the Senators chose to make this trade is beyond me, but it isn't too surprising. The next big trade was when Ottawa was part of their second three-way trade of the season when they sent off Derek Broussard to the Penguins, along with a 2018 third-round pick and Vincent Dunn in exchange for Ian Cole, Philip Gustafson, a 2018 first-round pick and a 2019 third-round pick. Vegas received Ryan Reeves and a fourth-round pick and the Golden Knights will retain 40% of Broussard's contract. The Senators quickly shipped off Ian Cole to the Blue Jackets for a 2020 third round pick and Nick Moutry who was assigned to the Belleville Senators who is Ottawa's affiliate team. The Ottawa Senators seem to be lowballed in most of these trades with the exception of the Broussard trade where they got good assets back. The common theme of lowballing though is something that is reoccurring with the Senators. Now the issue with Mike Hoffman's girlfriend and Melinda Carlson has been talked about by many other YouTubers and reporters so I'm not going to get into that. This issue pushed Ottawa to make a trade including either Carlson or Hoffman, so the Ottawa Senators eventually traded Hoffman to San Jose and got a very low return because they were desperate. The Sens gave San Jose Mike Hoffman, Cody Donaghy, and a 5th round pick in return for Mikel Bodker, Julius Bergman, and a 6th round pick. Everyone who knows hockey knew immediately that the Senators lost this trade, and it was made even more apparent when the Sharks flipped Hoffman for a whole bunch of picks that the Senators missed out on. Recently in the 2018 entry draft, Ottawa chose to keep this year's first round pick instead of giving it to the Avalanche. In return though, the Ottawa Senators must give up next year's first round pick and if they turn out to have a disastrous season, this could bite them in the butt. The Senators did draft Brady Kachuk though, who seems to be a promising star forward and a great pick for Ottawa in this year's draft. Ottawa didn't look like they were going to be bad this season. In fact, they seemed like they were on the upswing. One issue might be that the Senators overachieved in the 2016-17 season in playoffs, which might have led to things seeming much worse than they actually turned out to be. 
A key departure from the Sens in the offseason was Mark Mathot, who was picked up by the Golden Knights and flipped to Dallas in the expansion draft. Mathot was defense partners with Carlson, and they contrasted each other well, which made it tough for the Sens to see him get chosen by Vegas. The Senators also gave up too many assets in the Matt Duchesne trade, which will hurt Ottawa in the long run, seeing as how Colorado could possibly have Ottawa's lottery pick next season, and Matt Duchesne might not be the first on center Ottawa thought they were getting. Ottawa is consistently losing trades by giving up assets for cheap, which is going to wreck the Sens organization over the next few years. If Ottawa wants to become better once again and get back to being in the race for the Stanley Cup, they are going to need to make a lot of changes. One obvious thing Ottawa needs to do is focus on the development of their young players like Colin White, Logan Brown, Alex Formenton, Thomas Shabbat, and now Brady Kachuk, who all have the potential of becoming future stars. The Senators won't have their first round pick next year, but they need to hit each pick they make out of the park in the next few drafts in order to turn the direction of their team around. Another thing that needs to be done in Ottawa is containing Eugene Melnick's opinion because he never has anything useful to say, but because he is the owner, the organization doesn't have any control over him, so we can only hope that he starts making better decisions with this voice for him and the team. If the Senators could find a better general manager, I'm sure they would hire him because Pierre Dorian hasn't been doing any favors for the Senators over the last year in trades. Dorian has made many poor trades over the last season, and because of this, he has become a meme among NHL fans. If the Sens want to shed his reputation, finding a new GM could definitely help them and it could help kickstart the better drafting they are going to need to do. Speaking of trades, if Ottawa wants to get rid of Bobby Ryan, they can't package him with Eric Carlson. All it is going to do is diminish the value that Ottawa will be getting in return, and because Ottawa has already been stripped of a great amount of their value, Getting lowballed in a blockbuster trade will just tear their franchise to shreds. The last thing I think the Senators need to get right is getting the right assets in return for Eric Carlson. Whether they do it in a three team trade or not, the Sens need to find a way to get some draft picks, elite prospects, and roster players in return for Carlson because he is a Norris Trophy level defenseman and his skill is something that many teams will overpay to obtain. Because Eric Carlson doesn't seem to want to stay in Ottawa, considering the puck picking up and all, the Senators might be moving Eric Carlson by the beginning of next year, so if we do see a Carlson trade, let's hope that Ottawa can finally be on the winning side for once. These were just some of my ideas and opinions of the Ottawa Senators franchise and how they can improve their team going forward. The future ahead looks dark for Sens fans, but rest assured there is always light at the end of the tunnel. Whether the tunnel takes 10 years to get through or 5 is usually decided by moves the people in charge make. There is always light and things will eventually get better. If you enjoyed this analysis and critique of the Senators, please give this video a like so I know you guys enjoyed it and hit the subscribe button to stay tuned for more hockey and sports related videos. Tell me what you thought about this video in the comments below and if you have an opinion about what is happening in Ottawa right now, feel free to tell me in the comments. It is now summer break so I am going to upload videos more frequently. So stay notified and make sure to share my videos with a friend so we can expand the channel. Links to my Instagram and Twitter are in the description below, so if you feel like it, go check them out and support the channel over there. Thanks for watching everyone and I'll see you next time.